See, most people are like, how do I make cash flow? It's like, <laughs> okay, but that's where you get real wealth, right. okay? Hey guys, we're at the newest property we bought subject to. We're gonna give you a tour. We're gonna break down some numbers. I'm gonna use this handy dandy Sharpie to walk right on a wall that's gonna end up getting painted so you guys can see how this deal came to fruition, what the numbers are, and how we're gonna make money on it. And the, today, I got a special guest, yes. Alex Guzman. Alex, how did you find yourself in this garage with me? Um, running trash at Quick Trip. <laughs> I mean, can we get a picture? Of course. Of course. Yeah. Give, give Eric your phone. Please. Okay, three, yeah, please. two, uh, one. Yeah, hey, shout out to you, bro. I've been watching your YouTube videos and everything. We're going to make YouTube videos right now, dog. Yeah, dude. Yeah. I just bought my first house this year. Hell yeah, yeah. Man. Dude, I'm just, my brother's a real estate agent. I'm just on the grind here. Make sure, bro, why are you coming to our meetups? I don't know. I just had a baby girl a couple months ago. I got a baby girl too, years. bro. Come on. Yeah, no, you're right. We have what? DM me and I'll, I'll tell you yeah. that. When, okay. when does your shift end? Two o'clock. Two o'clock. Three minutes. Come to the house. Three, three minutes. Go, ahead, go make a YouTube video with us. You swear, guy? I swear, yeah. yeah. Come over there. I'll explain the deal to you on YouTube. Yes. Yeah. Cool. This is crazy, dude. Unreal. Thanks. Sweet. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. No, realistically, I've followed Pace on TikTok, Instagram, all the social media, all the good stuff. I mean, I've just been soaking in as much knowledge as I can from this guy. He, he, we were just like pulling in to get gas today and bragging about how we have QTs yes. in Arizona, but these knuckleheads, we got another oh, special guest, Robin here, they don't have uh, QTs over in Florida. So I was like pulling in and I was like, QT's the best, QT's the best. And then I hear, Pace more me. Yes. And it was you recognizing, and you ended up getting off your um, shift like 30 minutes later. Yeah. So we waited for time. you to make a YouTube channel um, or a YouTube thank video. Thank God you did. Yeah. yeah. Welcome to the channel. Yeah, Welcome, to the channel. Welcome to the channel. Welcome to the channel. Thanks for having me. Um, we'll put their Instagram names up. He just bought his first house, just had a baby named Mila. Um, he's going to use his FHA loan. So if somebody wants to do a deal with Robin, he's in um, Miami. Miami. Okay, and we'll put their Instagram information down below. But let's go inside the house and we'll break down the numbers, explain to you guys, and hopefully, th you gotta think of a couple of questions that the audience might have, okay? Yes. This house is a good little house. So how'd you find it? Great question. Here, come on in here. Let's break that down. Okay, how did we find it? I think the first question anybody's always gonna ask is how did you find the deal? Wow, this is not that good, is it? I need a better wall. We'll end up painting this. All right, so how did we find the deal? That's where the, the question always comes up, okay? But what I would always want you to start with before you say, where did I find the deal? I want, you always want to start asking the question, what was the pain point? What was the pain point? Of what the was seller? the pain point? Because the... there's always a pain point. Right. And so when people think like, you found the house you live in right now on Instagram, mm -hmm. you're not going to find these kind of deals on Instagram. No way. Okay, there was a pain point, okay? And the pain is where this all starts, okay? So the pain and where this came from is the seller bought this house in 2021, okay? And they used an FHA loan. What does that mean? That they only had to put down three and a half percent. Look at you, dude. Yeah. Great answer. So if in 2021, the market goes pretty high and now the market's trending downward as everybody's talking about, right? Mm -hmm. So what happens to their house that they bought in 2021? Underwater? Do, they're a little bit underwater, okay? So that's the pain point. Meaning that their house isn't worth as much as they paid for it. it well, here's the, here's the thing. Like, what'd you, you just bought your house, right? Uh -huh. How much did you pay for your house? Uh, it was like just under 375. Okay, 375. How much is it worth today? Uh, they say like about, almost four. Okay, almost four. Okay, this is great. Appraised it at four, actually. Okay, so let's say it's worth four hundred thousand. How much equity do you have? Fifteen. You have. You have zero point zero dollars of equity. Do you know why? No. Because if you sold that house today for four hundred thousand, you would have to pay your agent as the seller, the other agent as the as the seller, closing costs, home warranty, all sorts of things. And the average cost to sell a house in the United States is about 10%. Oh, wow. okay. So you would, spend 40, you would spend 40 grand out of your pocket to sell a house you, owe, you just bought for 375. So you would actually be, you would probably come out of pocket about $15,000 to sell that property today. Wow. So how much equity do you have? Negative. Negative. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Yeah, that is insane. So the difference between 400 and 375 is called the spread, but it's not technically your equity. Interesting. Okay, so this house, for example, uh -huh. this seller was in a similar situation. Okay. They bought the property for 575 
and the property, I bought the property today mm -hmm. um, at 575. Okay, so they basically got out what they put into it. But how did they not have to write a check to get out of this deal? You simply took over the payments and you said, hey, I'll give you some cash. I simply, right, so here's what happened. Seller decides, all right, we need to sell. Okay, this, uh -huh. they decide we're gonna go, uh, they're moving out of state, they have another job opportunity. Right. So they move already. Uh -huh. They hire an agent, okay, and this is gonna get to where how I found the deal. Mm -hmm. They hire an agent. And the agent goes and puts this house on where? MLS. The MLS. Damn, bro, you're on. You're hitting them. <laughs> okay, puts it on the MLS. Right. And seller's now gone. Uh -huh. The seller's now making uh what every month? Yeah. Every month they make a mortgage payment. Mortgage. Mortgage payment. Okay. So the Do house you? is no. They still own it. They. Oh, no, sir, but you're making it for them. We're not. You. We're not there yet. Sorry. We're not there yet. I'm gonna have myself. You're getting way ahead. So <laughs> seller decides, hey, we're going to move out of town. They leave the house vacant just like it is right now. They hire an, an agent to try and sell the house. And for five months, it's been sitting here because if they sold it for what they owe on it, they would do what, you, what would have happened there. They would have right. to cut a check to get rid of it. Yeah. So the agent, not knowing creative finance and what I'm about to tell you how I bought the house, yeah. the agent's like, I don't know what to do. And what our team does is our team starts calling agents once the house has been on the MLS for 100 days. 100 days. And we go, hey, it looks like you're having a hard time selling that house on the market. Right. Would your seller be open to letting us just take over the payments on that 575? What do you think the agent says? Back. They go, no. Oh. Then they say no again. Then they say no again. Then they say no again. They said no four different times. Our team continue to reach out, continue to reach out, continue to reach out. All right. Guess what happens? Six months goes by. Do you know what happens after six months with an agent and a seller of the house? The uh -huh. agent gets fired. Automatically? Automatically. After six months? Okay, it's called, they have a listing agreement, right? So right. they have a, an agreement that says, you can try and sell my house for six months. The agent says, it won't take six months. Right. I'll have it sold in two weeks, right? right. Agent gets fired. It now is no longer on the MLS. It goes to um, it goes to public notice that the house has been expired fr from a listing. And so what we do is our team goes, oh my gosh, call the expired listing. So what do we who do we call now? We go around the agent and we go directly to the seller and we say, hey. Would you be open to letting us take over your payments? Yeah. And the seller says what? Absolutely. Yes. And they said, I didn't know that was possible, is what they say. Right. Okay. So you go, I didn't know that was possible that you could do that. And I go, yeah, we can just take over that payment. It's called subject to. What do you think the seller asked? The seller says, why didn't my agent present this option to me? And we said, well, we gave him four offers. They said no all four times. The agent says, my, or the seller says, my agent never brought this up to my attention. Wow. This is happening like crazy all over the country right now. Right. Okay. So if you want to go get a deal like this, you go to the expired public. listing list. Which is public record? Anyone can get that or do you need your license? This is a really cool one. So um, for those of you guys watching, if you guys want to get an expired listing training, my wife did a two hour expired listing training for free. We'll put that in the description. Watch that training. You'll see exactly how to pull the list and, and what to say. Okay. Okay. So my team says, hey, we're not going to go to the agent anymore. We're going to go to the seller direct. The seller says, yes, amazing. So this is what I did. I, 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 now you know where I found it. Right. Now you know the pain point. Mm -hmm. Does this make sense? Absolutely. Okay. Here. Now, here are the terms of the deal. I bought the property for $575. By the way, if you guys want the um, settlement statement or the HUD, you guys want to see proof that we bought this property, we'll put that in the show notes down below the, in the description. Go down there, click on that. You guys can see how we close on this. So 575, we ended up paying the seller $15,000. That's, yeah, I had a question about that. So where does, because you always say you buy it with no money or without any of your money. So this is, this is why we invite people to these YouTube videos because they ask great questions. Yeah. I'll get to that. So $15,000 goes to the seller, uh -huh. okay? And then I paid also, what else would I pay? Closing costs. 
There you go. You can tell he's one. He's, he's doing deals. He's one of my students. He's right. a smart boy. So you got we paid about five thousand dollars in closing costs. Uh -huh. Okay, you remember what closing costs are because you just bought a house. Right. You're like, wait, who are all these people on these lines and making all this money? <laughs> exactly. Like, what? Okay. So fifteen thousand goes to the seller. Five thousand goes to a title company to do all the paperwork on this. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then, depending on my exit strategy, I'll probably need another twenty-five grand for this house. Okay, and we'll go through what I think the exit strategy will be. Okay, so let's just throw twenty-five thousand dollars on top of there. Okay, so you got twenty-five, thirty, so you got forty-five thousand dollars to get this deal done. Okay, and that's furnished, that's new carpet, that's everything decked out for, you know, let's see. What do you guys think? That's your wife. She's like, why are you not home? I had to give her the heads up. She's like, wait, you're gonna be on YouTube? <laughs> okay, so you I, I, you got a couple options, right? So. This $45,000 will allow me to get to like an A, a B, or a C exit strategy. Exit strategy is just how we make money. It's a stupid name, actually. We should call it the monetization strategy or money strategy. Like, what, how am I making money here? Right. Okay, so I took over a house at $575. My payment on this house is $2,300, and I have a 4% interest rate. I took all that over. How did I do that? I hired a title company. They transfer the deed, right? The deed is the ownership. They transfer the deed from the seller's name to my name. And is the seller not on the property at all anymore? They're the anymore? seller is not on the property at all. They don't own it. They don't have tax benefits. They have nothing. What is the seller still on? I don't know. The mortgage. Mortgage? Yep. Seller's name is still on the mortgage. I'm now making the payments on that mortgage. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. It does. Right. You're like, oh, okay, you, you can do that? <laughs> Isn't that weird? You can do that? Right. Well, I've seen, in your, I've seen you say that, but I've never really, I mean, I've thought, thought about it, yeah. right? I'll break down like what subject two is in another video just real quick so you can understand it a little bit, a little bit more in depth. So um, this is the loan that I just started making payments on, but right. I own the house. Mortgage stays in the seller's name, okay? And I'll show you a technical way how that works in another video on that wall. Okay. So now I've got a couple of options. I could either A, rent it as a regular rental. The problem is rent rate in this neighborhood is $2,100. Yeah. Is that a good strategy? <laughs> no. That was, yeah, that was my first question. I was like, who's going to pay that much to rent right here? Nobody. Yeah. So you right? Even... Okay. So I could rent it mm -hmm. or I could do an Airbnb. Okay. And I already know the Airbnb comps are a minimum $65,000 a year for this house. So that means about fit, a little over $5,000 a month I can bring in. That $5,000 will more than cover the $2,300. It'll cover my private money lender. That's where the, the $45,000 comes from, okay? And I'll make some cash flow. Yeah. Now there's also another option, okay? I could do midterm rental. Do you know what midterm rental is? Never heard of it. Okay, midterm rental is like traveling nurses. It's corporate leases. Um, let's say that that homeowner right there, their hot water heater explodes in their house, right? right? That'd be terrible. Their insurance company will pay to for them to come from here and live in my house for, with, uh, and pay my oh, rent okay. while they're fixing their house. Yeah. Okay, so like midterm rental is like insurance rental, corporate leases, traveling nurses, a thousand different types of things, okay? Yeah. Um, ALS Solutions is the name of the company that we use that fills our, fills our houses for us, okay? AS, ALS Solutions. Also, if you guys wanna learn more about midterm rentals, go to Tanisha Epps' YouTube channel. She's unbelievable. We'll put a link down there below. When you say fill your houses for you, mm -hmm. like, is that like your property manager or something or is that just a whole different? It's a company, that's all they do. That like They get still... paid, right? ALS Solutions gets paid by the insurance company that's handling oh. that to find houses for their tenants to live in. So there's midterm rental. And then there is another option. There's so many other options. I could turn this into like assisted living. Do you not need like a permit or something for that? Like a... You do. So that's, that's not a strategy that I was gonna put on the ABC. Uh -huh. Or I could do pad split. Like house hacking it? Or was, you put a wall down the middle or something or what? This is so good, dude. So many great questions. <laughs> you don't even know what pad split is yet, do you? Uh -huh. Okay. So pad split is a company that came out about two, three years ago that started finding tenants to rent by the room, and they charge people by the week to come in and live in these houses, okay? Wow. They can put nine people in this house at $175 a week. So what's the math on that? Pull out your phone. Nine times 175. Okay, nine times 175. 1575, yeah. That's per week, Time, multiply that by four. 6,300. Okay, $6,300. 
More okay. than Airbnb. More than Airbnb. So we just did a training on this, by the way, in sub two. For two, for two hours last night, we did a training on this. So if you guys want, I'll give you guys like a 30 minute uh, snapshot of what that pad split training was all about last night. But I think I'm gonna turn this into a pad split. And it's I'll, like another third party company, just like the AOS solution or? Yep, yeah. third party company. They find the tenants, they screen the tenants, they manage the property, they deal with everything except for cleaning and landscape. Wow. So pad split, I hire them. Uh -huh. They take 15% of that. Okay. okay, so they'll take like $800 or so a month. The rest of it's mine. That's insane. Will I make money? Oh yeah. I'll make like $1,500 a month net on this property. And you're, you're, that's your goal plan D? I'm most going most D. definitely? Yeah, most, most definitely. Wow. So where'd the 45 grand come? How am I gonna furnish it? How am I gonna, because I have to buy furniture for the pad split. Oh, okay. I see okay, that, that $45,000 comes from who? PML. A PML. PML? Okay, it can come from a PML or a PMP. PML means private money lender. Oh, okay. Do you have any, like, you have a brother, or cousin, uncle that has like $45,000? No. <laughs> okay, do you know anybody that has $45,000? Uh, like Liquid? Yeah. I mean, my dad, he just retired. Okay, so your dad, right? So uh, you could go to your dad and go, hey, dad, I need $45,000. I will pay you eight to 10% per year for that money. And out of the $6,300, you pay him a monthly payment for that 45 grand. So you got into the deal, no money out of pocket. Mm -hmm. Okay, you took the 45 grand, it covered all these costs. Your dad gets a, month, a little monthly check every single month. Now, a PMP is a private money partner. So you go to your dad and you go, hey dad, I need 45 grand, do you wanna be my 50-50 partner? I'll bring the deal, you bring the money, and we split the profits. Nice, yeah. Make sense? That's right. Okay. So that's, oh, that's how I started the first couple of years. I had a lot of private, private money partners, but I then realized I was giving up a lot of equity on my deals and I was like, crap, I don't wanna give up equity. So I went this route and then every couple of years I'll, I'll pay them all the way off, okay? Gotcha. So does that so, make sense of what I'm doing with the house? Absolutely, with private money lenders, like, mm -hmm. How, how do you even go about finding your first one? Just Googling it? And is that really just more so it's probably finding the deal and then people are like, oh, I will definitely. So private money lenders are typically other real estate investors that are like, I wanna be involved in a real estate deal. So like in our mentorship, for example, uh, you've obviously probably understand that I have a big sub two community. You see my okay, sub two hat. Absolutely. All my students wear the sub two community hat too. So like, if, for example, if you decided you wanna raise a hundred grand, could you raise a hundred grand today just inside our community? Absolutely, I already have. Just yeah. with one phone call. So just, you gotta be, you gotta yeah, be a, I'm a private money lender myself. I, I, I'm lending on a deal right now. So everyone around you can be a private money lender. Eric right. has, is also in a deal. So it's just about having those conversations. Damn, building making that trust. kind of money, dog? <laughs> <laughs> Damn, I didn't know he was making, bro, why are you, why don't you lend me the 45 grand on this deal? Why do I have to go outside of, so yeah, pri private money lenders are everywhere. Mm -hmm. I think when you first start, you go, I want a private money partner. Right, because then that way you and your partner are splitting like 1500 bucks a month. So this house will make seven, you 750 bucks a month and your dad 750 bucks a month too, right. okay? But that's not where you, you, that's not the only place you make money. What are all the other places you make money in real estate? Well, the equity over time. Um... Dude, dude, you... It's almost like you know shit. <laughs> okay, so the first thing, the first place we make money is cash flow, right? Cash flow, okay. So I'm gonna give you a whole master class on this. So cash flow, how much cash flow are we gonna make on this? 1500 bucks, right? Yes. So that's pretty good. For a lot of people, like you do, you get three or four of these, you're done working. Like you don't have to, how many of these would you have to have to big, like, never have to have another job? Yeah, like four or five? Yeah. Okay, cool. So two is appreciation. So how much do you think this house will be worth in 10 years? Right now it's worth 575. What do you think it's worth, it'll be worth in 10 years? 700, yeah, 750? Like eight, even. Okay, so let's say it's worth 800. So in 10 years, this property will make me $225,000. Okay, cool, There's, that's pretty good. Now, um, the third th reason why we buy real estate is for the tax benefits, okay? The reason why I don't pay taxes, you, were on, you heard me on the phone with a lender, I'm trying to buy a house in Montana. What did that lender say why she can't get me a loan in Montana? You have too much, uh, you're reporting too much ordinary income, was it? She said your ordinary income is completely wiped out from your rental depreciation, which is your tax benefits. Yes. So I make millions. Trump does. Yep, exactly what Trump does. You make millions, but on paper you're not being... You're not on being paper I look broke. Yeah, yeah exactly. Which is cool. <laughs> right, so the, uh, how do I do that? I do that with um, tax benefits. So here's how this works. Pull out your phone, I'll teach you how so to calculate. So you do that basically, so if you're, how are you saying that your house lost value? 
Like how are you the IRS does this. They, they, here's what they think, okay? And this is their rule, not mine. Okay. The IRS, it's called depreciation. Right. And the IRS says, all right, um, you bought a house for 575. We believe that in 27.5 years, your house will have to go through an equivalent dollar amount of repairs as what you bought it for mm-hmm. over 27 and a half years. So here's what they do. How many repairs would that be on a yearly basis? Do 575 divided by 27.5? 20,900. Okay, so 20,900? Yes. Okay, so that means every year the IRS will give me a tax benefit of $20,900 based on just this home alone. Now, here's what the freaking cool thing about depreciation is and the IRS is they will allow me to take seven of those up front in my first year. So multiply that by seven. $146,000. $146,000 in tax benefit in my first year of owning this house. That means this one house for most people, in wholesale last year, you made $190,000 you probably paid $50,000 in taxes. That's almost exactly correct. It was 45. Okay. If he bought just (laughs) this, if he bought this one house, he would have paid almost no money in taxes. So he would have saved 50 grand in one year in actual tax benefit to his pocket for buying this house. And no money out of my pocket because Eric is just funding. Eric wants, (laughs) does you see how this works? Sell it. I take over the seller's mortgage. Mm -hmm. The money that I need for furniture and all this stuff comes from Eric. Right. <laughs> I get the cash flow, I get the appreciation of future growth, and I get the tax benefits on top of it, okay? Now, the fourth reason why we buy real estate is because of pay down. What does that mean? That means my tenants pay down my 575 debt. Right. So am I paying that debt or are my tenants paying the tenants, it? The renters. Okay, so that's the, that's the silent savings account, I call it. So what happens is every month that goes down and down and down and down and down. So what happens is over time, I owe 575, the house is worth 575, and over time it goes up to 800, and over time it goes down to 200, and I, this house will create a delta of $600,000. Wow. See, most people are like, how do I make cash flow? It's like, <laughs> okay, but that's where you get real wealth, right. okay? So that's the, I call that the Delta. The Delta is pretty special. Now, do you know how much the average, let's look this up. Google, what's the, how much the average human being, average American retires with? What's the dollar amount? Probably 100 to 300 K, I bet is the number. I don't know the answer. By the way, YouTube, is, is this a good video or not? This is a, this is a good video. Are you learning anything? 65,000. How much? 65,000. See, this is what's crazy. I buy a house with no credit check. I didn't have to come out of pocket. Nobody asked for my 65,000. You will retire on one house, okay? 10 times more money in value off one house than the average American will retire. You don't need to go do thousands of these. You do like five to 10 and you're like the richest human being in your family. Oh, for sure. You do 10 of these, you retire with six, seven, eight million dollars. That's pretty dope. Yeah. Okay. So pay down, you let the tenants pay down the debt. You let the tenants give you the cash flow. You let the tenant, you wait for the time frame to go up and then the uh, IRS reward you for buying real estate. It's crazy. It's insane. So over those seven years, that's what you're getting, 150K in tax. No, you get it all, you get it all in your first year. What? Yeah. That, they give you a bump in the first year. It's that's called, called accelerator. Acceleration, accelerated Sorry. depreciation or bonus depreciation. Wow. Because like, oh, it's your first year. You can, if you want, we'll give you seven years up front. And then on the eighth year, I can start doing it again. Wow. Pretty cool, right? Yeah. It's crazy. Those are their rules, right? We just play by them. Those are it's <laughs> IRS rules. I have no, I had nothing to do with that. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, um, this property is pretty special. And if people want, gosh, this is like a full breakdown, guys. This is really, really cool. I wish somebody taught me this when I learned this. So um, the great thing is, um, I mean, all of it is pretty freaking great. And this is all I I do all day long is just go, how do I I buy one of these a day? One of these a day. I don't need to be licensed. I don't need to be an agent. 
I don't have to be really even that educated. I don't have to have any credit check. Nobody has, nobody, this 45 grand, mm -hmm. did the seller know I didn't have any, I didn't use any of my own money? That's a, okay, that's a good point. So did, they don't ask for like proof of funds or something mm -hmm. like that? Mm -hmm. The agents will ask for a proof of funds, but how does the seller even know what proof of funds is? How would they even know? Right. You know, because you've been watching YouTube yeah. and you've been watching wholesale stuff. This agent would cause a problem for you, but the seller's not gonna say, well, what's your proof of funds? Yeah. The seller doesn't even know what proof of funds, they've never even heard that word before in their life. Now, here's what we'll do, guys. We'll do a, we'll a two-part video here, and this is a good breakdown of this actual specific deal. We'll give you guys a couple of cool things. We'll give you um, my wife's training on how to find expired listings. We'll give you these boys Instagrams so you guys can DM them and chat with them. Also, you're a private money lender, so if people need money, this guy's rich, man, like so rich. Okay, that's, that's two. Number three, what we'll do is we'll give you um, the settlement statement on this particular deal so you can click down below and see the address and see all that kind of stuff and see that we're, we really do this business. Um, and then the fourth thing that we'll give you pad split training, yes. okay? Give you the pad split training so you understand that. And in this next video, what we'll do is we'll walk through the house and I'll show you guys how pad split will actually turn this house into a multiple room property in ways that you didn't even know were possible. So we'll see you guys in the next video on part two of the real deal breakdown at Anderson.